Andorra are 153rd in FIFA rankings, which is really impressive given they've only ever won 13 games. But today we're going to turn their fortunes around by making them the best team in the world and winning the World Cup. So I've made a few changes to the game, like making football the most important thing in the country and giving them 200 out of 200 for youth development. If there's ever going to be a player better than Messi, this should mean they're likely to come from Andorra. I've also downloaded the Andorran leagues and given them all top of the range facilities and a cheeky 25 million per season TV deal so they have some cash to splash. So how long will it take for Andorra to win a World Cup, I hear you ask? Well, probably quite a long time. We're talking well over a hundred years in the future. But let's check in with Andorra 25 years in the future to see if they're making some initial progress. Andorra have risen to 67th in FIFA rankings and all the changes that we made so they can develop some really good youngsters has worked out nicely because they've won the under 19 European Championships. That was actually very recently in 2045. So far they've qualified for just the one World Cup in 2042 where they lost to South Korea and drew with the Ivory Coast in the group stage, which then knocked them out. Also do remember that the World Cup at this stage is three teams in the group at the group stage, not four teams. Two years later, they had a really good run in the 2044 Euros, reaching the quarterfinals knocked out by Portugal. So it actually has taken them 25 years to get to a stage where they could qualify for a world or European championships. This is their best player, and I'm not gonna lie, he looks absolutely incredible. He's got a current ability of 186 out of 200, which does make him one of the best players in the world. But I am surprised that quite a lot of players are still playing in Andorra itself and not moving away to some of the biggest European clubs. The league itself has risen up to 37th in European reputation rankings and currently has four European qualification spots. So clearly there has been some good progress in the league as well. I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. Let's jump another 25 years into the future and see where it's taken them. They've gone from 67th in world rankings to 32nd. So we're making more progress although they haven't won any more trophies just yet. But the youth teams have been runners up in the under 20 World Cups and the under 19 European Championships. As for the World Cup, well, they are qualifying on a fairly regular basis now, not quite making every single World Cup, but enough to get through the group stages now. Can you imagine Andorra versus Brazil in an actual World Cup? It would be amazing. They have gone backwards in the European Championships though. They've made two quarterfinal appearances, both losing to Portugal, but since then haven't got past the second round. Although that does suggest they are actually getting out the group stage every single time, which is good progress. They've also made it to the very top of the UEFA Nations League. They've gone from the very bottom in Division 4 all the way to Division 1, which is pretty good going. Although I don't actually think anyone cares at all about the UEFA Nations League, so um, we probably will skip over this unless they win it at some point. This is their current best play. He's not quite as good as the one from last time, but he still plays for Chelsea and I adore the fact that he can play at centre-back, left wing back, and left wing. Although surely at 174 centimeters with 11 heading and six jumping reach, he must be played on the wing more, right? Nope, according to this, he has played seven games at center back and only three at left midfield. The team in general is a little bit stronger than it was previously. So we are again seeing some upward trajectory and most of the players aren't playing in Andorra anymore. Although it's not affected the league because they've now risen up to 13th in competition reputation rankings just behind the Scottish Premiership, but they still seem to only have four players is for European football. And I've just checked, we haven't seen a single team from Andorra win anything in Europe just yet. But I think my favorite competition is the Europa Conference League because it just throws up random winners every single season. Right, we mean business this time. Let's go another 50 years in the future this time to 21-22, where Andorra have only risen to 26th in world rankings, which doesn't really feel like the progress we would have wanted to see over the past 50 years. To be fair, we might have just caught them at a bad time. Maybe they've been higher in the past. And they have actually now won four European under 19 championships. It's just a real shame those under 19s can't develop to actually do it at the actual Euros. And less than a decade ago, the under 21s were runners up in the European championships. The World Cup though is a little bit disappointing. They did reach the quarterfinals in 2074. So that was just two years after we last saw them, but then they had a 20 year break from qualifying for the World Cup. And since then have never got past the second round. The biggest success in the Euros is the semi-finals in 2092 where they lost to Sweden. And actually they have 
have reached the quarterfinals on quite a few occasions, so maybe within Europe, they're actually doing pretty well. Oh, I tell you what, this team is looking quite good at the moment. There's quite a few players with over 150 current ability, which easily makes them some of the best players in the world. This striker is their current best player, and I tell you what, he looks like a goal-scoring machine. 111 goals in 159 games for Leon is no laughing matter. You know what, I've got a really good feeling about this World Cup with him as a striker. Let me just go a year in the future to see the result of this World Cup. Oh my word, they made it to the semi-finals, lost to England, and then lost the third place playoff and penalties to the Netherlands. England went on to beat Serbia in the final as well, if you're interested. Right at the start of the video, I said it would take 100 years for Andorra to win the World Cup, and this is the 100th year. Imagine if they had won it. That would have been amazing foreshadowing. The Andorran League itself isn't really doing much. It just seems to be hovering around the mid-teens in reputation rankings, but they have now got a fifth spot for European football. But we can say congratulations to Engodani, who have won the Europa Conference League in 2108-09. So as we travel another 50 years in the future, Remember to subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. We've broken through 100,000 subscribers now, so thank you very much for that one. But obviously, we need to double it now. We need to get to 200,000. So if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. And of course, drop a like on the video. It really helps me out as well. Andorra now find themselves ninth in world rankings. They've broken into the top 10. This has to be a good sign. But looking at the European Championships, well, it's not really a good sign as they've never got past the semi-finals. They've reached it another time in 21-24, losing to Italy. Italy, but after that it's quarterfinals, second round and group stage. They seem very, very inconsistent. As for the World Cup though, they won it! They won it in 2162, beating Germany in the final! We've done it! We've, we've actually done it! So briefly, in 2162, Andorra were the best team in the world. We need to go and have a look at that team. Do you know what? This isn't the best Andorra team I think we've seen. I think we've seen better in the past. There's only three players here with over 150 current ability, but they were carried by Gonzalo Coutinho, a 24-year-old striker playing for AC Milan. He got 122 goals in 158 games, by the way, but he has some of the most unreal physical attributes I've ever seen. That's mental. Pepe Ramos was the midfield maestro and his mental attributes are absolutely superb, but he's also quite the goal scorer from midfield, scoring 54 goals in 119 games for Leon. And I suppose the man racking up the assists was Ricardo. Ricardo Candido, a left wing back who seems to have a pretty decent cross on him as well as some very nice mental attributes. But after those three players, it all kind of just seems to fall apart a little bit. Like there's no one there that really should be winning a World Cup. But despite the team not being very good, they had an insane World Cup run. They beat South Korea 3-2 in the opening group stage game before battering Ecuador 4-0 to top the group. They actually had to rely on extra time to get past Paraguay in the second round before then needing penalties to beat Croatia in the third round. This is my favorite part though, quarterfinals, Andorra for Brazil won. What an absolutely incredible game that would have been. But then Andorra come up absolutely clutch with a 94th minute winner in the semi-finals against the Netherlands and even better, an 87th minute winner against Germany in the final. Extra time, penalties, 94th minute winner in the semis and 87th minute winner in the final. That is just clutch. So there we have it. We made Andorra the best team in the world and eventually 140 years in the future, they can win a World Cup. So if you're Andorran, you've got a little bit of time to wait. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you'll enjoy the last one. West Ham striker Mikel Antonio recently said that if he played for Man City, he'd easily score 30 goals. Well, I put that to the test, but with a non-league striker instead. Can a non-league striker score 30 goals in that Man City team or even outscore Haaland? Well, I'll let you guys watch it to find out.